So we've been upgrading our storage and our backup workflow here at Think Media with the recent addition of this Synology DS1618 Plus, which is a network attached storage solution. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing four different ways that you can back up your photo, video, and data files with this unit, as well as sharing my first impressions of it so far. Coming up. Hey, what's up? Sean here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And on this channel, we do a lot of tips and strategy videos as well as tech gear reviews just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any point during the video, if you wanna check out uh, any details about the gear we reference and mention, we'll post all of that in the YouTube description below. Let's jump into the video. So I've been doing video production and content creation for over 15 years now, and I've used a lot of different storage solutions over the years, including internal hard drives and a lot of external hard drives. In fact, in our other office here, we've got a whole pile of hard drives, and that's kind of got us to where we are today, but to be honest, um, there's some issues with it. I actually had a hard drive fail this past year, and so we lost a bunch of data. Um, things were just hard to keep organized and whatnot. So that that sort of pushed us to look for an upgraded solution. And that was definitely began with researching NAS solutions, network attached storage, which offer a lot more features. It's kind of like an external hard drive with a brain or really an external hard drive that is is its own computer and that offers redundancy, that offers a lot of features. And so let's kind of talk about the DS1618 Plus, and then I'll talk about how we're integrating this into the Think Media team here so we can always keep our data safe, keep our 4K files backed up, and all of the other photos and media that we create in our company. So recently Synology sent out this disk station so we could test it out. And so far we've been super impressed with the features. You know, there's kind of a learning curve that comes with uh, a NAS device like this. And so I'll explain a little bit about what we've learned with this unit and go over the features kind of one by one. First of all, you have six hard drive bays. So immediately you have the ability to have a lot of expandability, a lot of backups and redundancy. Your typical um, external hard drive usually just has one drive so you're super vulnerable because if that is to crash or if it is to get lost or if it is to uh, break, then ultimately you lose all of your data. So with a NAS solution like this, you can do various RAID setups, R-A-I-D. And RAID configurations are all kinds of different things, including the ability to have two drives work together so they're faster, or to have four drives work together so they're not just faster, but they're also backed up. So if one fails, all you have to do is take the drive out, plug a new one in, and it'll rebuild all of your data for you. And so after having a hard drive crash at Think Media this past year, uh, and actually really debating on a thousands of dollars that we uh, had to invest to get that data back, um, it really made us think about investing in a, a solution that could protect our data at a higher level. Now this particular model from Synology is intended for small to medium sized businesses, serious home users, like let's say you've got a lot of video files, audio files, maybe a security camera, multiple, a gaming system, a laptop, a couple different computers in your house. Because this attaches to your network and anybody can access it on that network, um, this is a great solution for that. And then of course, I would say serious creative professionals, photographers, videographers, this is like an idea ideal solution, and that's where we really focused in on this one, for backing up a lot of your footage, of course your photography, being able to access it on the road and wherever you go. And so, so far we've been massively impressed with how easily it's integrated into our overall workflow. Let's do a quick rundown of the specs. Now inside of this is a quad core 2.1 gigahertz processor. You've got four gigabytes of DDR4 memory, but it's expandable up to 32 gigabytes. And that's our plan because we want to peak the performance here. Um, you know, the benchmarks are 1,550 megabytes reading and 580 megabytes writing. Of course, benchmarking and getting uh, the speeds of a, a NAS like this is a little hard to do because it's, you know, depending on your network and a few other factors. But basically, this thing is set up for blazing speed. And one of my favorite things about it is on the back are the four one gigabyte um, 
ports. But one of the coolest things about this 1618 Plus is you have a PCIe slot for an optional upgrade to a 10 gigabytes card for your uh, ethernet connection speed. So that's super cool and that's an upgrade that we're planning on making. Additionally, you can also boost performance even more if you want to add an M.2 SSD cache drive. And so that's what we plan on doing. Speed matters to us. We always want our workflow to be as fast as possible. And so our plan is to max it out as much as we can for peak speeds. Now, as we mentioned, you've got these six hard drive bays that will take up to 12 terabyte drives. Now, one of the things to note if you're gonna be looking into a NAS device like this is you wanna make sure you get NAS hard drives. They're intended to be used in this environment so they can be on uh, like 24 seven, they can handle heat better, they can handle air correction and things like that. And so inside of here, we've got actually six 12 terabyte uh, Seagate Iron Wolf drives. And uh, those are incredible. Overall, as far as the sound in the whole unit, everything is very quiet. The drives themselves, depending on what ones you use, are gonna create some noise themselves. But on the back, you've got two fans and you can tell that they didn't uh, skimp here. The fans are ultra quiet and the overall unit runs um, at very low volumes. And then of course, there is the DSM software. And after doing my research, that's one of the standout features of Synology in general, because the software is super easy to use. It makes setting things up, putting everything together really great. And this unit's already won a bunch of awards. And so I think that it's the whole ecosystem together that Synology has created. Um, that is the reason for that. All right, so we're gonna talk about the four ways to back up your data with this in just a second, but let's touch on the price first. Now, right now the DS1618 Plus comes in for right around $700 to $800, depending on where you're shopping online, uh, you know, BH, Amazon, Newegg, and we'll post links to the various sites so you can price check in the description below. Uh, but keep in mind that that is just for the unit itself, right? It's, it's its own computer, basically, so you get the unit, but you're also gonna have to buy hard drives separate. And so so these Iron Wolves run about uh, $450 each. And so that's 12 terabytes though. And so if you were to just maybe start with two, that's the cool thing about a solution like this. You could maybe just get the two drives. So you've got the speed, you've got the space, and you've also got the redundancy. And then as you need to add more space, you can keep filling up the other bays. Of course, there's lots of different configurations you can do. We have this running at a RAID 6, which actually means that two drives can fail and so uh, before we have any issues. And when one starts to go, what's awesome is the software will let you know even ahead of time and if one fails, boom, you just pop another one in and you're back up and running. But for more details, I'll link to the uh, Synology website so you can see the comparisons of the different ways you could configure your storage. Okay, so we've covered the specs, so now let's talk about four different ways to back up your data with a device like this. And the first one is just directly with an ethernet cable. So right now, coming out of our 4K editing PC here, an ethernet cable is just running into this and we're able to transfer data back and forth. And so when we finish a shoot, what we can do is just make sure that after a project is edited here, we can just drop it directly on the Synology. And uh, from testing, we were get, getting real world transfer speeds of over 100 megabytes a second. And that's before any of the upgrades that we plan doing, especially that uh, 10 gigabyte card and uh, new cabling and things like that. The second way is over Wi-Fi. One of the things I love about this is that once we have it plugged into our router, which is in the other room, now you can jump on it. If you're on the Wi-Fi network here, you can log in once we give you the guest and username password. And so what we've been doing is Kyle and Omar uh, on the Think Media team can come over uh, after they're done with the project and just from wherever can actually just pull files off of uh, the Synology or upload files back onto the drive. Which brings us to the third way of backing up your data, which is actually off-site. And so the Synology software is super cool. You can log in from anywhere. And then once you're logged in, essentially this is your own personal cloud. It's like having your own Dropbox, right, that you own, uh, that you don't have to pay more for more data or worry about the monthly fees or anything. If you have an internet connection, you can get to it. And so because uh, we kind of all work remote here in Las Vegas, Kyle and Omar can just uh, upload footage over night if they want, just drop it on there or pull footage off no matter where they are, whether even just here locally at home or whether on the road. 
And actually one of my favorite things about the 1618 Plus is that it is cross compatible with both Mac and PC. This is a PC right here, but Omar and Kyle and the Think Media team both have MacBooks. And so because it's just network attached storage, you can access it from uh, a tablet, a phone, uh, a MacBook, a PC laptop, a desktop, you can access it remote, and everybody can just um, pull files in, cro collaborate on files, download them, upload them. And so it really has been super cool for our team workflow here at Think Media. And then number four, this also integrates with the actual backup solutions on either Mac or PC. So what I mean is, in the first case, you can just use it kind of like a hard drive. You can manually back up your footage or download your footage. So again, once we finish something, we can just drag and drop it on there, organize it. But this also integrates with, of course, Mac Time Machine or any of the Windows or Microsoft backup solutions. In fact, there's actually a lot of great videos that talk about step-by-step -step how to set that up uh, for either Mac or PC including a great video I was watching recently from 9 to 5 Mac. And so I'll link to those videos if you're interested in learning about integrating it with like a backup solution that would maybe back it up every night just to make sure everything's covered or in periodical time frames. And so as far as my final thoughts go, again, this is just a first impressions video. We're just starting to integrate this into our workflow, but I am super pumped. Again, after losing a drive last year, it was super discouraging and it made me think like, man, I wish I would have set something up like this sooner. And as far as use cases, I would say that you know a lot of people in our community here at Think Media, you're maybe just starting, uh, you're kind of a hobby content creator or you're not doing a ton of professional work yet. I think uh, external hard drives and maybe at least thinking about duplicating your footage so that you always have uh, a backup is a great way to start. But at some point, if you're further along and you're a professional content creator, you're doing a lot of freelance work, you're shooting a lot of different photos and videos, a lot of raw files or 4K files, I think a NAS solution like this is a major uh, key to think about upgrading to in the future. And I love the fact that, again, it is scalable. It's actually daisy chainable. So if you were to max one out with the SATA ports and the USB ports on the back, you could add another Synology disk station. You can also plug in extra external hard drives even into this and then access those from the network. You could even plug in a printer to the back if you want to just build out your network and be able to control it. Uh, so there's a lot more features than we were even able to cover in this video. So I look forward to kind of doing a check-in and an update on the disk station after we've been able to clock a few months on it. Question of the day, what is your current workflow and backup solution for your photo, video, and data files? Let me know in the comments section below. So thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe and ring the bell if you're new here. And if you wanna check out other videos in our computer and video editing workflow series, click or tap the screen right there. For another video from Think Media, click or tap the screen right there. Until next time, this channel is all about bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon.